What is up, everyone? Back with more Sugihime. We are still at the very beginning of this arc route, you know, still going off through, um, through the pre-arc stuff. You know, we haven't met her yet. I'm not sure how the circumstances of meeting her are going to go this time. It might be a similar thing where Shiki still kills her, and it probably is going to be largely unexplained, uh, at least due to what was revealed into, in the CL routes, and it might just go a different direction, but they might need to nerf arc once again, or, or maybe not. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was in the steel route that they needed to nerf her due to how things worked out. But we're going to see when we get to that point. Um, for now, we're just going to go through these three stages. I, I liked um, seeing more of Yumizuka because I, I really didn't get to see any of her during the steel route. Maybe at the very beginning, possibly. But I don't even know how many scenes I even get with her in that route. So um, that's a cool thing so far. Obviously, all the little things, I can see the choices that lead to the uh, other heroines, like, for example, here with Akiha, or uh, TV with Koaku, and yeah, all these kinds of things are pretty cool, but again, I know you all want me to get to Ark, so, uh, and I do as well, I have to see that smile once more, so we're just gonna try different choices, because this is also part of, um, a good excuse to go back and just see, like, what the other choices are like, so this is, uh, I'm enjoying this. Stressed from dinner, I loosen my shoulders. I stretch out as far as I can and then collapse onto the bed. Man, even dinner is hard work. Well, it's not like the knife and fork are really heavy. It's just that Akiya's gaze is really severe. Are you there, Shiki-sama? I can hear Hisui's voice along with the knock at the door. I think I might have butchered that. Yeah, I'm here. Come in. Excuse me. Isui enters with a bow. I have come to make the bed. You may not enjoy watching it, so would you mind relaxing in the city room for a while? No, I don't mind watching. I'll just behave myself in the corner, so just go ahead and do your job without minding me. Bouncing up from the bed, I move into a corner. Isui looks like she wants to say something, but thinks better of it and silently begins to make the bed. Isui. Yes? What is it, Shiki-sama? Oh, can you keep making the bed? There's no need for you to stand up so straight. Isui doesn't answer. It seems like she's had a servant's education drummed into her. I don't even want to know why she's so, like, uptight and, and quick as a servant. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to find out, but one day we'll get there. Please, just talk to me while you work. I'm beginning to feel bad because it seems like I'm interfering with your work. If you say so, Shiki-sama, then I will comply. Isui silently returns to making the bed. Uh, is it true that the curfew here is seven? Ooh, new CG. Eh? Oh, yes. The main gate is locked at seven and all the entrances to the mansion are to be locked at eight. So this is, okay. This choice might be a good way to get to Hisui route. At that point, so this is good education for me because I don't want to look up a guide if I don't have to, so because I'm weird, but yeah, there you go. There's also a rule that one must not try to go walking around in the mansion after 10. Not even walking around in the mansion. Well, I've got no complaint with that, but isn't that kind of harsh? Aki and I are children, so I don't think you have to go that far. Indeed. It is a rule, however, so please abide by it. Yeah, I forgot about that rule. You can't walk around the mansion. I don't know if that's to do with Akiha or Koaku or Hisui. Because there's something there that maybe I don't know about. You are aware of the recent disturbances at night, are you not, Shiki-sama? Yeah, that vampire thing Arahiko was talking about. Because it seems that's a little much for a precaution against the vampire in town. Like, sure, don't go outside, don't leave the mansion. I mean, you have a giant freaking gate. Not that that would stop a vampire, but still. Within the mansion, that seems just like another situation entirely. Well, as long as something like that is happening, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. Do you have any other questions? Yes, we finish just spreading the sheets and turns around to face me. Eh, let's see. I have all sorts of questions, but I know nothing about Hisui and Kohaku-san. Do you mind if I ask an off-topic question? Yes, what is it? I'd like to know what kind of work you and Kohaku-san do around here. I am here to save your needs and my sister Kohaku is to serve the lady Akiya-sama. In our spare time we do the maintenance chores around the mansion. 
Is there anything more you would like to know? To serve, so that's what it is after all. My shoulders suddenly feel heavier. It seemed completely natural to Akiya when she said it, but I'm nothing more than a normal high school student. I have no interest in having a girl close to my age serving me, at least for now. <laughs> at least for now. By serving me, you mean you're a personal servant? Yes, please do not hesitate to ask anything of me. Well, I get it. Going by how Akiya was talking about you, it doesn't seem like I can dismiss you, so I'll just obediently let you serve me. Is there anything in particular you would like? Nothing in particular, but could you stop calling me Shiki-sama? To be honest, I get chills down my back when I hear it. But Shiki-sama, you are my master. That's what I'm saying I hate. I've been living a normal life up until yesterday. I have no desire to start living a life where a girl my age addresses me with Sama. I see, Hisui's response was less than enthusiastic. Just call me Shiki, and in exchange, I'll call you Hisui. Let's do away with the formalities and be more casual with each other. Still expressionless, Hisui lowers her eyebrows as if she's being troubled. But you are my employer. It's not like I'm hiring you. You're the one doing the things I can't, so you're the great one. I see, Hisui gives another unenthusiastic reply. Looks like I won't be able to talk her into it in just one day. Anyhow, that's how it is. Don't be so formal towards me. I'll be grateful if you'd tell that to your sister, Kohaku-san, too. Very well, as you say, Shikisama. By the way, excuse me if I'm a lot more mellowed out and a lot more... ...paced in my reading. I know I'm typically faster, but... Uh, I don't know. This is comfortable for me right now. I feel like I kind of strain myself when I... Da -da 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 ...over and over and over, but... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of do what I did last time, maybe to a greater extent. Like, when I get to scenes that it will say, hey, you've seen this scene before, do you want to see it again? If, if there isn't, like, anything in there, like, super relevant, like a whole Yumizuka scene, then I'll probably just cut like I did at the beginning without the Alko scene in the first arc uh, part. So we'll see. Because I, I don't want to, like, drag these out too long past, uh, like I'm doing right now. But, you know, actually, like, past what I've already seen, so... Uh, I'm at least enjoying these new scenes, so there you go. Expressionless Hisui bows her head. She completely failed to understand. We will be leaving now. Please rest now for tonight. Bowing, Hisui puts her hand on the doorknob. Oh, I forgot to ask something. Ah, hold on for a second. Running towards the door, I put my hand on Hisui's shoulder before she leaves. In an instant, Hisui's arm pushes away my arm with incredible momentum. Incredible momentum. And there's the thing in at the end of the CL route where Kohaku, which, oh my gosh. I've blocked out in my mind how absolutely awful Shiki was to Kohaku. Sure, Roa's influence, like, otherwise Shiki would never do that shit. I get it. But holy fuck, dude, it's it's kind of... Oh boy. That, that pushed its way back into my brain. But y you saw during that scene the way, like, Kohaku, like, dug her nails into Shiki, like, more than seemingly normal, because doesn't Shiki, like, wear long sleeves or something? I, I don't know. Maybe It doesn't matter at the time, but just the way she dug into it, like, the way, like, I think Shiki, the way it said it, it's like she ripped the skin from his arm, or... And you see with incredible momentum here with Hisui, clearly, like, these two have something to them. They're not just normal servants, so... That's a good reminder there. With a whack, she slaps my hand away and leaps back. Eh? It's so sudden, that's the only thing I can say. Isui is expressionless, but she glares at me fiercely. Eh? Did I just do something wrong? Ah. Uh, I am very sorry. Isui's voice sounds very nervous. I'm not used- I'm not used to being touched. Please forgive me. Isui's shoulders are faintly trembling. I feel like I just did something really terrible. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize without thinking. I don't understand why myself. I just feel sorry for Hisui and I lower my head. So this, I feel like I've seen this scene before. Maybe in a different timing or context or something. But uh, yeah, I feel like they, they've added this here even though I didn't make this stay in my room choice before. Isui says nothing. I get the feeling her stare is calm again. 
You have nothing to apologize for, Shikisama. I am the one to blame. No, well, maybe, but I just... I scratch my head. Isui stares at me, pausing only to blink for a second. Um, what was it you wanted to ask me, Shikisama? That's right. I stopped Hisui because I wanted to ask her something. Oh, I wanted to ask about Akiha. Doesn't she go to a boarding school? That was only during middle school, Shikisama. From this year onwards, Akiha-sama has special permission to attend school from home. That's a good reminder as well. Okay, so... I think I incorrectly stated last time and understood up to this point that she's always kind of been homeschooled. So, middle school, she went to... You know, she went to middle school. But from this, from this year onwards in particular, He's had special permission to attend school from home, so maybe with, um, for whatever reason, their father passed, uh, and with her being the new head of the family, maybe she has to go through some special, like, I don't know, some special tonal training that's screwed up, that's, I've, I've kind of been thinking, but that's a good reminder about that. Eh, you mean she goes to school from here? Yes, but it is uncommon for her to come home before dusk like today. Akiyasama has practice up until dinner, so she is always home before 7. Practice. Practice? Practice what? It's a good question, Shiki. Today is Thursday, so she would have had violin practice. Oh, fair enough. Eh? Usually she is able to return before dinner on weekdays, so if you have anything to say to Akiyasama, please let Nesan know after dinner. Isui bows to say goodbye and leaves the room. Violin practice. What on earth is that? She's not some upper class lady or anything, so why should she have to do something as bothersome as... Oh wait, she is an upper class lady. Yes. Come to think of it, my sister Tono Akiya is a natural born upper class lady. In my memories, she was always the obedient, ever uneasy sister, constantly following me around. As a child, she was always quiet, never having even the courage to express her own desires. She was a frail girl who would always live in fear of a scolding from our father. Yeah, people really do change after eight years. See, that's another thing we know, that she, before, she was always very obedient, uneasy, and that she would follow um, Shiki around. No nervous, not c any courage, you know, a bit frail. And now we see how strong she appears to be now. Again, there's probably still a... Underneath that, someone very hurt. Felt, maybe felt abandoned by Shiki. Uh... Probably. Even Shiki admits this, like, I kind of left her here, like, no wonder she's mad at me. After eight years, I've become the me I am now. Akiya's become the person she is right now, too. Eight years is a long time. It's half of our lives up until now. I was absent from this mansion during that vital period where a child becomes an adult. I'm sorry, Akiha. I think things would have been better if I had been with her during those eight years. I unknowingly mumble an apology. Left by myself, I lie on my bed. This house from eight years ago, my blood relative from eight years ago. It feels a little like they belong to someone else. Oh. Oh. -ho -ho -ho. Ain't that some foreshadowing. Ah. <sighs> I wonder what's going to happen to me now. Rumbling to no one in particular, I fall asleep. Are we going to meet Nero soon? Awoo! <laughs> yeah, speak of... Speak of the devil. Uh, I hear the wave-like sound of something's voice. Awoo! Something is howling. It's too sharp and high-pitched to be a stray dog. It I like to think it's Nero just doing the howling noise. It echoes in my eardrums. I know it's his little fucking wolf thing. Is it howling at the moon? Awoo! This doesn't feel right. The beastly howling is beginning to give me a headache. A woo. It doesn't stop. A woo. A woo. A woo. Ah, just shut up already. I wake up. I can hear the sound of a dog barking outside the window. The clock indicates it is just past 11. This is more than just a neighborhood nuisance. Damn, I can't sleep like this. The dog's howling comes from somewhere near the mansion's fence. It doesn't seem like I can go back to sleep at this rate. Uh, can, imagine, wait, can I just go to sleep? <laughs> Man, I'm not gonna deal with this shit. 
If I go to sleep, do I just miss Nero? Wait, I think this is a choice that affects whether I go to Ark or not. I think I have to go check it out. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna not skip this. But I may make a cut here. Probably not though, I don't know. I feel like since this is technically the fundamental route, I think it's important to at least go through back at least a couple times throughout my routes. Once now and maybe in a route or two, I don't know. Even Nakia and the others wouldn't be able to sleep with a racket like this. Since I'm the only man in the house, I guess I've got no choice but to go investigate. I think it's coming from the right side of the mansion. I open the curtains and check what's happening outside. And outside my room is a large tree. On one of the branches is perched a blue crow. Ah, we meet again. In the dark night, I can see nothing but black, and yet it's quite clear to me that the crow is blue. I've never seen or even heard of a blue crow before. It glares at me. It feels like the eyes of the crow are staring at me like soulless, soulless mechanical lenses. Wow. After a yawn-like cry, it noiselessly flies off. Ugh, pardon me. What was that? I can feel a faint chill on my back. The howling of the dogs grows louder. <laughs> it's really starting to get on my nerves. I head cannon, it's fucking Nero doing the awoo. Not only is it noisy, but hearing it causes my heart to start pounding. I have an almost instinctual distaste for it. Shut up. I change out of my pajamas into my uniform and leave the room. Oh boy. Aboo. The howling echoes through the night. That sound is definitely coming from the right hand side of the mansion. For some reason my throat feels dry. The high walls stretch their ways around the mansion. Clearing my throat I head towards where the dogs must be gathered. I arrive at where the howling originates. Huh? Awoo! The howling doesn't stop. But there are no signs of any dogs. All there is, is a person. Under the light from the street light that carves apart the darkness stands a man in a dark coat. The howling is coming from right beside him. But there are no dogs to be seen anywhere. The man in the coat is pretty tall. He has a strongly built body and his back is facing me. My throat so dry. Awoo. The voice of the dog resounds in my ears. The night air coils itself around my skin. Nero is just a very evil furry. For no apparent reason, I have difficulty breathing and moving as if I'm at the bottom of the sea. Wow! A cry overhead. With a loud flapping of its wings, the blue crow lands onto the man's shoulder. Then, suddenly, the crow vanishes. Eh? Can it be an illusion? It looked like the crow disappeared into his black coat. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The man in the black coat turns around. Under the white streetlight, he is just like a shadow. A black lump. In the middle of that lump, only the weapon-like eyes shine out, burning with a fiery intelligence. Ah. I can't breathe. But fortunately, those eyes seem like they aren't even look- They're not even looking at me. Yeah, Nero doesn't even acknowledge Shiki, which is ironically why he got fucked up in the CL route. And probably is gonna be some sort of downfall for him in this one. Not here after all. The man in the black coat leaves. When I can no longer see him, I am finally able to breathe properly again. <sighs> I managed to take a few breaths. I realized the dog's howling has ceased. That didn't, that didn't take too long. I return to my room. There is no sign of Akiya or the others being awake. I guess I'm the only one who couldn't stand the dog's howling. Gah! What's happening? My head still hurts. Huh? Why am I trembling? Looking down, my fingers are trembling. My entire body is shaking and my back feels very cold. It's almost like, yes. It's like someone ripped out my spine and replaced it with ice. I feel dizzy. Is it just the usual anemia? I get the feeling of falling towards the floor. On the way, I see something unpleasant. What? Even though I'm wearing my glasses, I can still see the lines. Ugh. 
I hadn't seen them at all for a long time, so my reaction is magnified. I feel sick. With the dizziness from my anemia, I feel like I'm about to throw up the contents of my stomach. What's going on? I don't understand. Only that as long as my eyes are open, scribbles fly everywhere across my vision. It's a bad... dream. Somehow, I manage to collapse into bed. Yes, I should sleep. That's the easiest way to deny what I'm seeing. My body doesn't move as I want it to. All I should do is lie here and fall fast asleep like a corpse. So I forgot that that happened this early as far as him seeing the lines with his glasses on. So there you go. Um, I think I will skip these scenes because I'm pretty sure it's just going to be breakfast, waking up, going to school, that kind of thing. So I'm going to... S Shit. Uh... As I was saying, um, let us, since this is, as a rule, I want to see new scenes at the very least. Um, let's see. I think last time I did greet both of them. I mean, look, I'm not doing their routes. I'm not doing their routes. It's fine. It's fine. The morning lessons are over. It's lunch break, and Arihiko has gone on ahead to the cafeteria. And I'm pretty sure all that happened after waking up from the dream was like, um... Shiki wondering what the hell was going on, and him not being able to see the lines anymore, so... It being a non-problem for the time being, of course, we see how it happened again later in the CR route, so... I'm pretty sure that's all that was. Um... It's lunch break, and Arihiko has gone ahead, on ahead to the cafeteria. Now, where should I have my lunch? Okay. So, part of me is somewhat concerned that I may not end up on the arc route as I'd like to. Because again, I feel like it is way easier to stumble onto the CL route than to get arc. Maybe I'm fine so far, I don't know, but... Um... Ah... Uh, in the classroom? Because cafeteria would take me to Arihiko in CL, right? In the classroom? I decide to go buy some bread and eat it slowly in my classroom. There are still a few guys and that close group of girls in here as well. Huh? I just noticed. Yumizuka Satsuki, usually the most eye-catching of all the girls, is nowhere to be seen. Oh boy. So yeah, about that whole saving her thing. Oh boy. She must be absent. I must be pretty absent-minded to take until lunchtime to realize one of my own classmates isn't even here. You have already viewed this scene, sure. Ah, I think... Oh, okay, I think I... <laughs> okay. I see what's happening here. I know, so I know what this is. This is what I picked last time, because I'm like, okay. This is brought by my own hands, but... This is just a bad dream. I like how this song is still playing. This is kind of a bug that happens when it goes to that menu. At least for me. But... Because I know here, you know, in Killing Ark, which by the way, I guess happens. Holy fuck, it still happens. Um... Damn. I guess be- I guess it just happens either way, because again, Ark in her full power form is very powerful. I guess they have to nerf her, kind of like how Saber is super nerfed, being under Shiro. Um, but I'm wondering about this. But somehow this stench of blood smells so horribly real. Wrong. Yes. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. But I killed her. Is that fact wrong? I didn't kill her. Is that fact wrong? Yes, I, Tonoshiki, wanted to kill that girl. That's what I wanted to do back then. Just that it was all so muddy inside my head, I didn't put it into words. Wrong. G I feel like throwing up from the smell of blood. Ah, g The contents of my stomach rise in my throat. Ah, ah. The crimson is soaking into my eyeballs. I feel dizzy. I fall down on my knees into the red sea of blood. Ah, g My gastric juices come up. I throw everything back up. My food, my gastric juices, everything while I cry. There is nothing left in my stomach. 
This damn song. This is like with the Kohaku choice in, at the end of Last Drought. Fuck's sake. Well, my body continues to force me to throw up as if trying to undo what had occurred and return me to a normal life. Gah, Pain. It hurts like my insides are burning. The tears won't stop and my body collapses to the floor like a pile of garbage. My knees sink into the red puddles spread all over the floor. Red starts to stain my body. It's so painful and red it's like I'm dreaming. Ah, ah. I keep crying. The fact that I killed someone is making me sad. No, it's not right. I am sad because I killed her without a reason, like breaking apart a doll. So we know that, that Roa, that... It's interesting, this chapter is also called Inversion Impulse 2. Um... Huh. It makes me wonder, like, with the whole life force connecting to Roa and actual Tonoshiki, if that Inversion Impulse... Um... Kind of feeds into Tono because of that, like beyond just Roa's influence, also Capital Shiki's influence in being who he is as a Tono, like that inversion impulse kind of being an amalgam of the two, and it being more effective on him that far. Also, just the personal investment of Roa loving Ark. Of course, he doesn't understand that. He doesn't understand his own feelings. That's why it's interpreted as hate. But in seeing her. It just triggered Roa. Oh boy. I don't understand why I feel like this, why I killed her without a reason. I can't find the reason. It's a lie. It doesn't feel real. But this is just one of those dreams I have when I faint. It's a lie. Besides, how can someone cut apart someone like that with just a knife? I read it in a book once. It takes a whole day of strenuous labor to cut someone up, even when using a saw. That's why there's no way I could have possibly done such a thing with just a knife. These lines never existed in the first place. Everything was just a delusion I had fallen for. Oh boy, it's a lie. Gah, Gastric juice drips over my lips, passing out of my mouth, dripping down my jaw. Mixed with the juices is something red. My throat is probably bleeding because my stomach keeps trying to throw up even when there's nothing left in there. Uh oh. It hurts. That's why this, this isn't a dream and I'm just lying to myself. It's all lies. Yes, actually, I understand everything. I lusted after her. Just looking at her aroused me. Jeez, dude. When I cut her apart, it was so thrilling, I almost... Yeah. Those eyes, too. If I knew these lines could cut things apart like paper being shredded, I should have understood that even a person could easily be cut apart like I just did to her. I lived a normal life without even thinking about something like that. If I really am the sort of dangerous person who could easily kill just about anything, then I should have put out these eyes or lived a life without seeing anyone. Remember Alko's words. I know it's fucking hard to right now. Like, jeez, dude. I'm sorry, Sensei. I'm so sorry. Not even such a simple promise was I able to keep. Have I gone insane? I don't know. There isn't even a trace of that impulse left. The thought of holding back never crossed my mind. I didn't even consider trying to stop myself. Kill this girl. It had seemed like the obvious thing to do and I went through with it. Then the answer is simple. I must be insane. I've probably been mad since 8 years ago when I miraculously... Oh. came back to life from a fatal accident. I can hear the sound of rain coming from somewhere. It's raining. I'm in a daze. My throat hurts when I try to breathe. Yo, so wait, he came straight home. Because, yeah, with CL, like, if you have enough CL points, I suppose, um, you wander out, I think, to the park while it's raining, and then CL finds you in the rain, right? But here, Shiki just ends up going home. My throat hurts when I try to breathe. Ouch. I can speak. Chiki-sama? Then I become aware of someone's presence near me. My room. Somehow, I'm in my own room. Good morning, Chiki-sama. Isui? Yes. How are you feeling? Isui asks me an odd question. There's not a single thing wrong with my body, but... By the way, I want to I apologize if... 
it seemed like I kind of rushed things there. I actually didn't expect that to happen then. I was like, oh, okay, we're going to skip this and then... Oh, fuck. I guess Ark is... We still fuck her up in this round, so pardon me. I, I actually am kind of... As much as I want to, like, notice details, I am also a bit eager myself to kind of get the route going. Not to, not to necessarily rush things, but, um, you know. So sorry if that seemed too quick, but I'm actually kind of... I'm kind of excited at this change already, that Shiki goes straight home. Yes, why? Why am I asleep in a place like this, even though I kill... I was about to say killed someone, but I stopped myself. My brain tells me I shouldn't say those words. What am I doing here, Hisui? Do you not remember? Your school called to say you left early. However, you did not come back even after dusk, so even my sister went to look for you. She found you resting in the park. Ah, uh, that's what it was. So we were still in the park, but we ended up losing consciousness. So in, and instead of CO coming, of course, without having the CO points to do so, Akiya just found us because she went to look for us anyway, and that's how we ended up back here. That makes sense. Ark, you mean the park near here? Yes, when she found you, you were resting on the park bench. Then you returned to the mansion on your own feet. You have got to be kidding. I don't remember any of that. I do not believe it is such an odd thing that your memory is unstable, Shiki-sama. It is difficult for me to say this, but when my sister brought you back, you were in a daze. I don't remember any of this, but I have no reason to doubt what Hisui says. Yeah, it's already 9 o'clock. I don't remember anything. Yes, when you returned to the mansion, you said you wanted to sleep. My sister suggested we call a doctor, but you said it happens all the time. I see. I guess I do collapse from anemia all the time, but this time it's different. Because I had killed someone, huh? What did I look like, Hisui? Huh? My clothing, I mean. It was my uniform, uh, with the blood. It was stained with blood. Your uniform was dirty, so I am washing it. Washing? You mean those blood-stained clothes? There was certainly mud on it, but nothing like blood. Eh? But it was so... Even though I was on my knees in a sea of blood, and both my arms and legs had been completely soaked red. That's interesting. Wait, was that a thing before? That the blood disappeared like it was just mud? Huh. Have you had a nightmare of some sort, Shikisama? Unless Hisui is just lying to like... Or maybe Akiha somehow hid the blood. I don't know. Covered him in, in mud to hide the blood. I don't know. You looked like you were having a bad dream until now and you do not look fine. I know it was raining, but it wouldn't take... Get rid of all the blood, right? I don't know. Isui stares at my face. A dream? That a dream? Was it a dream? That feeling? That smell of blood? That hideously beautiful white girl? No, maybe you're right. That's just a bad dream. Phew. I breathe out slowly. That's right. That's got to be a bad dream. There's no way I would break my childhood promise to Sensei needlessly and for no reason. Ah, I'm finally awake. You- I was trying to cross the border. Yes. I was caught by that imp Imperial ambush. If you are feeling better, I will go prepare dinner now. Dinner, huh? I know it's just a dream, but the color and smell of blood still lingers in my mind. No, it's fine. I'm just going to sleep like this tonight. More importantly, Hisui. Yes, what is it, Shikisama? Um, well, it seems like I came back after dusk. Did Akiya say anything? Akiya-sama was not home yet at the time. She came back about two hours ago and was in informed of your condition through my sister. Hisui seems to silently ask, what about it? Ah, wait, okay, so I don't know why I thought she said Akiya. She said my sister, okay. Got you, got you. So, Kohaku did. Huh, interesting. Oh, it's nothing. I was just wondering if she was disgusted with me for causing her trouble on just the second day after I've come back. It did seem like Akiya-sama was distressed, but I would not say she was disgusted. Saying that Hisui takes a step away from me. Well, I will be leaving now. Please call for me if you need anything. Yeah, thanks. 
Oh, one more thing I forgot to ask. Yes, what is it, Shiki-sama? It's raining outside. When did it start? Before you came back, Shiki-sama. When my sister found you, you were drenched. I see. I can't even remember that. It seems like it was a pretty serious case of anemia. If that's the case, I shouldn't have pushed myself and should have just rested at school. Good night. Oh, good night. I'm really sorry about today. Please express my gratitude to Kohaku-san, too. I understand. Good night. A dream, huh? It's like I don't even know what I felt. But if I can't understand what happened or how I felt about it, how do I know it was a dream? I can hear the sound of the rain outside. My mind still feels a little heavy. I glance down at my chest. The old wound from eight years ago is still distinctly there, like a burn scar. Ah, on top of my desk lies the knife my father left me. That old blade which had cut that white girl into 17 pieces. That was a dream. Nothing more. I repeat this over and over again. Cause a soul in my head. I'm trying to placate myself until I sleep. Oddly, that Tim McGraw song is kind of applicable. Was it Tim McGraw's song or Nelly's? Anyway. Um, but when I was a child, I think someone once told me, don't tell lies that can't even fool yourself. Mm-hmm. That's good advice. Three, the Black Beast. Ah, this is when Ark comes, approaches us, comes and approaches us and we have something interesting. Okay. When I come to, it's morning. Maybe the rain stopped, I can't hear it anymore. It seems clouded outside and the sunlight through the window is dim. Ah, ah. Taking a deep breath, I get out of bed. I didn't sleep well last night. Over and over, as I was about to fall asleep, that scene would replay in my head and keep me awake. The crimson floor and limbs everywhere. Reason and memory are liabilities at times like these. They force me to remember things I only want to forget. It's just a dream, why am I so bothered by it? Yes, just a dream. I should forget it quickly without a moment's delay. Knock knock. Someone knocks on the door. It's past six o'clock in the morning. Who could it be this early? Excuse me. Chiki-sama, are you awake? Yeah, I've been sleeping since yesterday afternoon, so I'm awake early. So what about you, Hisui? What's happening at this time in the morning? Hisui falls silent. Actually, now that I look carefully, I notice she has my school uniform in her hands. I see. You brought me a change of clothes. Yes, I am sorry. I have shown you something you do not wish to see. Hisui keeps silent. What is it I didn't want to see? Huh. I don't get it at all. I don't understand, but thanks anyway. That's pretty much the response. It's not your route, but thanks anyway. I want to know what's going on with you, Hisui. Just leave the clothes there. I'll get changed soon and go to the sitting room. Hisui nods in assent. Very well then. Please excuse me. Hisui begins walking silently, only to suddenly turn around. Shiki-sama. Um, if you have the time, I will also prepare a bath for you. A bath? In the morning? Yes, you are terribly dirty, Shikisama. Would it not be best for you to wash before you go to school? Isui asks me with the usual lack of expression in a disinterested voice. Now that she mentions it, I am dirty. I did collapse from anemia in the park yesterday, after all. So it's not unnatural. Yeah, would you mind doing that for me? I'll have time for that before I go to school if it's this early. I understand. Please come to the bathroom in about 20 minutes. Isui sets my uniform down and leaves the room. It's still 6 o'clock in the morning. With nothing to do, I spend the 20 minutes in my room staring at the ceiling. This unfamiliar ceiling. I enter the bath and pour water over my head, which makes me feel a little refreshed. I take a deep breath as the cold water soaks my hair. What a terrible dream. There's got to be something wrong with me having a dream where I kill a beautiful woman like that. If just one day of living in an unfamiliar mansion is enough to give me dreams like that, I hate to think what the days ahead are going to be like. Ah, 
Oh, you have no idea, buddy, and neither do I. I've really got to get it together. I clear my head with another splash of cold water and wash myself. Ow. I feel a sting as the towel touches my throat. What's this? <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I look at my neck in the mirror. How did this happen? My throat is red and swollen. Whoa. It's almost as if I injured it by repeatedly throwing up. Ah, uh, wow. I return to my room and change into my uniform. Wow, I guess when you're just throwing up your fucking stomach acid, then yeah. Jeez, man. It's barely 7 o'clock. Astounded at how much clearer my head feels after the bath, I pick up my bag and leave the room. Do you guys take baths? I haven't been able to take a bath, like... Since I was a, like a little kid, dude, I feel like I've been on showers for such a long time and kind of the idea of a bath kind of grosses me out? I don't know. I just can't really do it anymore. Like I acknowledge that they can be relaxing, like with a bath bath bomb and maybe you do some candles, I don't know. Like, seems cool, but no, I don't know. I'm more, I'm more showers in that sense. Anyway, Koako-san has just come out of the sitting room when I go uh, down the stairs. Good morning, Shiki-san. You sure are early today. Kohaku-san makes a bow while smiling. And you look refreshed too. Have you just had a bath? Oh. Yeah, I just took one. That's amazing, Kohaku-san. Can you tell? Uh-huh, I can tell just by looking at you because your hair isn't dry, Shiki-san. You certainly look cuter after you've had a bath. Whoa. Easy now. I avert my gaze just a little as I am faced with that warm, carefree smile. It's kind of embarrassing. No, Koaku sweet. Please hold on, please hold on for just a minute. I'm going to prepare some breakfast now. Eh? Break fast. <laughs> uh, I guess she means something to eat. Such a trivial thing causes me to remember the color of blood. Wait, what? Are we already having this Kohaku? This chair, this chair, this chair? I don't have much of an appetite at the moment. It's a western-style breakfast like yesterday fine with you, Shiki-san. Ah, uh, yeah. I really don't mind, so breakfast, huh? That bath felt so, so good that I almost forgot about it. Really? You didn't eat last night either, so I was talking to Hisui-chan about how maybe the sound of your stomach might have woken you up. Ah, uh, no. Sadly, that's not the case. I've been a light eater since I was little, so I often skip one or two meals at a time. I see. Now that you mention it, you've got a nice body without any excess meat on you. Could it be that you're a vegetarian? Hmm, perhaps. Come to think of it, I get the feeling that all I ate at the Arima house were vegetables. That's pretty good. Kohaku-san busily heads back to the sitting room. Ah, oh, Kohaku's a sweetheart. But I don't feel like eating right now. Ah, oh, that's alright, Kohaku-san. I'll go to school without eating today. Tell Akiha for me. Bye. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, I... Something fell. Oh god. The whole structural integrity of my setup is compromised. Suddenly my arm is tightly grabbed. Shiki-san. Eh? I can't believe it. Koaku-san is angry. What are you saying, Shiki-san? Haven't you looked in the mirror this morning? Uh, well, I take a look in the bathroom mirror. Take a look. You're lying. You wouldn't say something like that if you looked even once. Koaku-san is seriously angry. Come to think of it, when I saw my face in the mirror, I think I saw death warmed over. I'll be fine. It's just that I don't have a lot of blood in me, so I look worse than normal people. This won't do. You won't grow without eating breakfast. If you don't have an appetite, I'll prepare you something easy to eat. So please, go to the dining room. Holding onto my arm, she drags me towards the sitting room. You won't eat, boy. I've got no choice. I really don't feel like going along with this, but I'll have to accept Kohaku-san's good intentions. Good morning, Nissan. How do you feel? Akiya greets me reservedly. That firmness about her yesterday is gone. I guess it's because she's worried about me. Ah, good morning. I'm feeling, well, good in a certain way. Returning her greeting, I head towards the dining room. Ah, please wait here, Shiki-san. I'll call you when it's ready. Kuwaku-san disappears into the dining room by herself, leaving me the downcast-looking Akaya and Hisui, who stands emotionlessly by the wall. This is kind of awkward. 
Nissan, about last night, is it true that you collapsed in the park? Oh, seems so. I don't really remember it myself, but if that's what Kohaku-san and Hisui say, then it must be what happened. Oh, stop talking like it's someone else's problem, Nissan. You have a weak body, so if you ever feel bad, please contact the mansion. I will send someone to pick you up right away. Hey, listen, there's no need for that. I'm not like a primary school kid. I can make it home by myself no matter how bad I feel. And I guess the fact you could not make it home last night would mean you are a child. Hmm. It sucks to admit it, but Akiya is right. Yesterday was different. That kind of thing is really rare. Look, just because I have chronic anemia doesn't make my body weak. There's no reason for you to worry about every little thing, Akiha. Yesterday was, you know, just a terminal case of bad timing. That's all. A terminal case? Please do not use such inauspicious words, Nissan. You've only just come back to the mansion. What would I do if you died? Akiha is seriously angry. Jeez. You take things you take things too easily, Nissan. Please take better care of yourself. Even if you tell me that I don't push myself as it is. Not in any clubs and I do everything the doctor says. You'd have to put me in a sanitarium for me to get any better care. This is before Arka's gonna come for that ass boy. She's gonna be like, hey, you're gonna help me <laughs> gonna help me take down Nero. But that's oh, it's so crazy to still think that Nero is the side the side boss, the mini boss. Yes, I would love to do that if I could. Avoiding my gaze, Akiya says something very frightening. Oh dear. As for Hisui, she's standing by the wall like a statue. I'm at a loss for conversation. There's still some time until we eat, so... Oh. I actually don't remember... What I... Clicked here? I don't know if I... Huh. Oh, that's right. What's happening with our mansion now, Akiha? What do you mean? If you are talking about ownership of the mansion, I am inheriting it. No, not that. The only people in the mansion right now are you, me, Koakusan, and Hisui, right? I was wondering what the rooms are being used for and so on. Nothing. As a general rule, all the rooms except the ones we are using are locked. Your room is at the back of the second floor of the west wing and mine is on the east wing. Huh. All the rooms except the ones we are using are locked, huh? There's secrets, dude. There's some secrets, and it's more than Shiki Roa. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Hisui's room is right before the stairs on the west wing, second floor, and Kohaku's room is just before the west wing, first floor. Father's room is next to Kohaku's room. That's open for now, too. Incidentally, the sitting room is the first right turn in from the lobby. In Akiya's words, it would be something like right before the lobby on the first floor of the east wing. The gaming room and the guest rooms next to the sitting room are closed, but I will open them if you decide to bring friends here. Gaming room, huh? We got a we got a PC in there. We got a switch. Uh, the archives are well. There's there are some bad rumors going around about them, so currently they are off limits. The archives, dude, they are hinting, hinting things. What is up with the archives? What about these other locked rooms? I feel like the archives in particular are of interest in terms of locked rooms. Bad rumors going around about them, huh? Maybe tonal history? Hmm, I see. Okay, got it. I get a strange, suspicious feeling about those off-limits archives, but for now, they have absolutely nothing to do with me. AKA, learn about it in the far side route, dummy. Chiki-san, it's ready. I can hear Koaku-san's voice from the dining room. Right, so I'm gonna get some grub. Oh, Nissan, please refrain from talking in such an unrefined manner. Akiya shoots me a sharp glare. Ah, oh, you finally gone back to normal. I liked you more when you were calm because you were worried about me. I was not worried about you, Nissan. Akiya quickly looks away. Looking at her with a faint smile, I go to the dining room. I'm escorted outside by Hisui. Please take care. Saying the same thing she always does, she continues to stare at me. Shiki-sama, what happened to you last night? Last night? Nothing in particular. I was just feeling sick at school, so I left early. I was on my way back when... On my way back? I just collapsed in the park. Well, I guess I was just being careless like Akiya said. 
Yeah, I'll be careful from now on. I'm not placing any blame on you, Shiki-sama, but you look like you are pushing yourself this morning. Please take care along the way. Isui, Isui makes a deep bow and sees me out. As I approach the school, I begin to catch sight of more and more students in uniforms. It's Saturday, so most of them are smiling while they walk. It's only a little way to the main gate once I pass this intersection. It's still only 7.30. Looks like I'll be able to get to school with time to spare today. The light turns red, and I stop in front of the crosswalk. The school fence is just on the other side. Since it's a school path, the footpath is protected by a guardrail. Even now, the students in front of me are heading towards the school gate. There's no one but students from our school on the other side at this time of day. There should be no one but the students. But between the cars rushing by, I feel like I catch a glimpse of someone in white. I love that smug expression, dude. I can finally use this as a thumbnail. Uh, she is there. Dressed in white with golden hair down to her shoulders. Long, slender brows and red eyes. So, um... It's interesting, um, I, I'm pretty sure this was brought up to me in terms of, uh... Because I think it was in reference to connection to Monogatari and just Japanese culture in general where a change in hair or a cutting of hair symbolizes a, a change in the person. So in, we see in the flashbacks that Shiki saw that were, you know, from Roa's perspective, um, Ark, Ark used to have long, long flowing hair. And now it's very short, so... I don't know, it's just like a design thing that was pointed out to me, I think, because it was a similar thing in Monogatari, but yeah, man, I, 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 like, I like little things like that. I like learning, you know, cultural things that are indicative of, you know, changes in characters. Uh, anyway, let's, let's be scared again. Dressed in white with golden hair down to her shoulders, long, slender brows, and red eyes. I've seen her only once before, but there's no way I could mistake her for someone else. But that's impossible. I killed her myself yesterday, cutting her into pieces. What? No. Even that's a lie. It's all just a dream. Isui told me so. No, she didn't say anything of the sort. It's just that I wanted to believe it was a dream. Then it really wasn't a dream. But then why? Why does she exist as real as anything? The light turns green. The students around me walk towards the other side. I'm the only one amongst them who stands there stunned. She sits on the guardrail. Her wags... Her... Her legs, her legs swinging idly. I saw swinging and I was like, her legs. As if she is waiting for someone. I can't tell how long she's been waiting, but her expression isn't a grim one. Who is she waiting for? She fidgets restlessly as if she were waiting for her lover. Oh, well. Lucky for you, buddy. I have a bad feeling about this. Ah, the girl in white looks over in my direction. It's probably nothing more than a coincidence. She's just a stranger who looks like her. You must be waiting for someone else. If not, then this moment must surely be a bad dream too. After all, I completely and utterly killed her with my own hands. But she's looking this way and smiling. Looking very satisfied at having found the person who killed her, her smile seems to say, you finally come. Giving a familiar wave and a smile, she hops off the guardrail. Fluttering her hair, she heads towards me. Don't come. This is a bad dream. The light turns red. Don't come near me. She doesn't even look like she cares walking straight across the street while the cars pass by. There's only a few meters between us. I'm telling you not to come. The reality before my eyes does not change, even when I scream out. Screaming in a voice even I don't understand, I run from the girl in white. I run. I run with all my strength. No regard to embarrassment or shame, I blast through the passersby, running full speed across the asphalt. I wonder if Shiki can feel, like, Roa's fear, like, in seeing Ark come for him. Like, of course, there's, you know, love that, there that he doesn't understand that he confuses for hate, but there surely is fear at having been killed by her many times. Now, I know this is a unique situation, because it's a weird shared life force situation, but apparently that'll be explained more, so. Just cool to see the influence. My breathing is wild and my heart screams out. But still I run. I feel like I'm going to go crazy if I don't. I look behind me. A girl in white is walking towards me. She's definitely following me. The girl I've killed is chasing me. That's more than enough for me to run. 
Uh, uh. My heart feels like it's about to explode, but I ignore it and keep running. When I look back, the girl is still there. With those light footsteps, she follows me as I run away. Uh, uh. My head droops down. My arms feel heavy. My legs feel like they're going to tear off. But despite that, I'm running with all my strength, and yet I can't get away from someone just walking after me. Uh, uh. My breathing is out of control. I think I've already run several kilometers. But even so, when I look back, she's always there, walking towards me. Naturally, like she's taking a stroll, she follows right behind me. <laughs> it's not funny, but I begin to laugh. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. But even so, I run. My body complains that I'll die if I run anymore, but I keep running. The reason is simple. If she catches me, she'll kill me for sure. I ask myself what I base that on, trying to shake it off as mere imagination. But even as I try to console myself, I am the one who knows best it's true. There's no reason, no basis, no evidence. I already know it as a fact that if she catches up to me, I will be killed. Ah. Pathetically, I collapse to the ground. I fall forward not because I tripped, but because I simply can't move my body a single step further. Gah. Ha. Ah. Lying there collapsed, I somehow managed to crawl my way to the wall. I try to pull myself up against the wall, but it's no good. My knees lose their strength as I try to rise, and I collapse back down. My body won't move anymore. Pant, pant, pant. I look up as I breathe. It hurts. I don't have enough oxygen. I can't think properly because of it. I can't even tell what I'm doing anymore. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why? Why? I don't even know why the girl I've killed is alive. Unmistakably, I've utterly and completely killed her in the most final way imaginable. So why? How can she be waiting for me in front of my school, smiling? I'm sure I killed her. That's right. I'm sure I killed her. I'm sure I killed her. I'm sure I killed her. I'm sure I killed her so... Why, 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 why? See... So the repetition, like, Nasu loves his repetition, but... In particular, like, when, when it went to caps there, even though I've seen this before, that still kind of, like, scared me, dude. And the silence is... I can't even... I can't even cut the silence, dude. It's fucking... Need his damn eyes. Oh, is the chase over already? With light footsteps, she comes into the alley, shrugging her shoulders in disappointment. Hello. You really gave me some trouble yesterday. With a warm smile, she comes into the alley. Oh, that smile. I've got to run away, thinking that I retreat only to hit my head against the concrete wall. The chase is already over, right? This is a dead end, after all. There's no need to worry about anyone coming along or interfering. She smiles, looking very happy. Panicking, I look around at my surroundings. A desolate alley. I'm disgusted at my stupidity. Running away here is like asking her to kill me. It's been a long time. 18 hours since then, I finally found you. She takes another step into the alley. Y you What? I definitely... Yes, I'm the girl you killed yesterday. I'm glad you remember. The- That can't be true. There's no way that can happen. Don't be ridiculous. Dead people can't be alive. People die when they are- That's true, but there's no need for you to be so surprised. I just revived, that's all. With that curt response, she takes another step, the sound of it reaching my ears. The distance between us is gradually decreasing. Revived? Stunned, I repeat her phrase back to her. Revived? You mean some doctor saved her with some surgery? Don't be stupid. There's no way any human could revive from being cut apart like that. Yeah, then again I'm not- Yeah, then again I'm not human. Huh? Her words are so simple there's no way I could have misinterpreted them. I'm not human. That's what the girl in front of me said. You're not human. Jeez, isn't that obvious? Do you think there's a human being out there who can revive after being cut into pieces? There's no way a human like that could exist. Something like that is just a monster who looks human. Something that revives even when killed. Something that death is irrelevant to. That makes me sad when I think about Xiao. Something that quickly returns to normal and starts moving even after being cut to pieces isn't something you can call human. What is being human, Shiki? What is being human? No way. To be human versus to have humanity. That's a different thing, right? That seems to be the girl right before my eyes. I try to laugh, but my throat is so dry, I can't. 
What the hell is that? It's not exactly a funny story. Besides, there's too many things in this story that aren't funny. If she's not human, it explains why she's alive even after I've killed her. I start to calm down. This is a situation where I've got to observe everything and think it over. You said you're not human. So what are you? Me? I'm called a vampire. To put it in your terms, I'm a monster who lives off human blood. Ah, good. Vampire is at least something I can easily understand. I see. You're a vampire. She smiles in satisfaction to indicate her assent. What a crazy reply. I've heard that vampires can't walk around during daytime, but I guess that's a trivial matter right now. So what does this monster want from me? For some reason, she re recoils as if surprised. After a moment, she puts her hands on her hips and looks at me, irritated. Have you forgotten what you did to me yesterday? Even though you didn't know me, you cut me apart the moment we met. You've got to be pretty used to this to ask me what I want with you now. Looks more disgusted than angry. But right now, that's how I feel too. Because someone I've killed is complaining to me about me killing her. Hey, are you listening, murderer? Yeah, I'm listening. Sorry, could you shut up for just a minute? <laughs> Reflecting on how unlucky this is, even for me. Sheesh, I have the worst luck. There was a girl I wanted to kill for no reason, and I killed her on pure impulse. My memory wasn't clear after that, so I calmed down, thinking it was just a dream, but it turned out to be real. What's more, it turns out the person I've killed isn't even human. I suppose I'll skip for now. Okay, so... Okay, I... I'm a little... For this way, I'm a little concerned about, um... Because uh, while I am curious about band endings, especially, you know, going back through, having the opportunity to do some of those, I don't want to mess up the route. So that's, like, kind of what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned, like, I'll make choices that aren't going to lead to bad ends and I'll just kind of fuck up the route. So I'll see I'll cooperate. Okay, this is, like, yeah. And that's what I'm afraid of, too. So here's here's what I'm going to do. Um, I can't skip. I can't skip too much, man. This is Ark's route. I can't skip stuff now that we're with Ark. Like, earlier on... Like, even when it skipped to, like, after, like, Shiki went and killed her, like, I guess that's fine. And, you know, before with Akiha and Kohaku and all the stuff in the mansion, like, fine. Like, that's fine. But I, I can't skip now. I, just, I can't do it. Even if the scenes are redundant, like, this is kind of, this is integral to, like, this is Ark's route. So I need to, you know. For some reason, I can't decline. I did kill her after all. It's my fault she's weak and has to ask others for help. It is my responsibility. Besides, although I've only known her for a little while... It doesn't seem like a bad person. There you go. So how about it? Can a human like you cooperate with a vampire like me? That would be the obvious answer, but... Ah, don't look at me with those eyes. Why is it? It's making me feel overcome with guilt and unable to refuse. Now that I've gotten myself into this mess, I won't be able to sleep at night if I just deny all responsibility. Man, I just know I'm going to regret this. So yeah, I think I could probably do it. The enemy is a serial killer, right? As a resident of this town, I'd probably be struck with some kind of divine punishment if I refused to help you. Eh? You mean, I'm not going to be your shield, but if it's just being your lookout, I'll do it. I feel disgusted at how stupid I am as soon as those words are out of my mouth. I feel disgusted, but... There's something about her deeply shocked expression that's... Wow, are you serious? I'm really a vampire, you know? Hey, listen. Why are you saying all this now after you've threatened me so much? I'm going to say this for the millionth time. Ark has the best sp uh, sprites in the game. By far. She is so fucking adorable. Uh, that's true, but... Like, to me, more adorable than Saber. Call me crazy. Well, whatever. <laughs> I feel like I just said something that is going to get me in trouble. Uh, well, whatever. If you're going to cooperate with me, then I should be grateful. With a very happy expression on her face, she approaches me as I lie there on my rear, up against the wall. A contract is established. She extends her hand towards me. I guess I can finally introduce myself now. I'm Arcuid. Mm, my last name is really long. Runestud? So just Arcuid is fine for now. I'm a true ancestor type vampire. How about you? I heave a heavy sigh at her unprecedented introduction. As a sigh of resignation, evidence I've decided to accept this nonsensical situation. I'm Tono Shiki. 
Sadly, I'm just your everyday student. I said it before, but I'm really not going to be much use. Grasping her Archiweed's hand, I stand up. She takes a long, hard look at me and then offers me her hand again. Nice to meet you, Shiki. I'll have you take responsibility for killing me. Akiweed grins as she extends her left hand. Huh. <sighs> there are all sorts of responsibilities in this world, but this is probably the first and last time someone takes responsibility by helping someone they've killed. Damn it, this is seriously messed up. But there's nothing else I can do. I grudgingly extend my left hand and shake hands with the woman in white claiming to be a vampire. I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. And I feel like, because here's the thing, like, sure, I could read it on my own, and I could cut it from the video, but I feel like that defeats the whole purpose of me, like, doing the playthrough of the arc route. Like, come on, I, I gotta do this. This is a pretty nice room. I have no problem spending the night here. Ah, okay, this is her saying that. Archimede looks around the hotel room. I've got nothing to say for now. My room has probably already been discovered, so let's hide out here for the night. You don't have to worry about money. I'm rich, so I'll treat you. Speaking cheerfully, Archimede closes the curtains. She also turns off the lights, and the room becomes as dark as night. I sigh. What are you thinking, Archimede? I'm thinking about all sorts of stuff. Well, that's not what I mean. I'm asking why you've rented a high-class hotel, not a cheap one, and why you rented out the whole top floor. I try to say this, but I stop. Right now, my job is to guard this so-called vampire and nothing more. I'm not going to ask any useless questions. No, forget it. Do whatever you like. You're weird, Shiki. Suddenly getting mad and going silent like that. I just don't get you. Arkiwi lies on the bed, smiling like she's having fun. I'm going to sleep until the sun sets. You'd better rest while you have the chance. Vampires don't move about in the daytime, so you'll be on guard for real during the night. Do you realize you've just said something that completely contradicts your existence? Oh, it's alright for me. Well, I guess it's almost my limit. Good night, Cheeky. Wake me up when the sun sets. Hey. Like a machine whose power is cut off, Archimede suddenly falls asleep. Huh. She's so defenseless. Right now I could run away if I wanted to. It's weird, because when you see the defenseless thing, it's like... Fucking Roa. Like, Roa is just, like, dripping, like... Just oozing out of him. It's very subtle right now. Not so subtle when he killed her, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's like, haha. Um, right now I could run away if I wanted to. She did force me to come with her after all. I could easily run away now. I don't have that impulse anymore, but I even killed you once yet. Was she able to suddenly fall asleep despite that? I look at Arcuid's face as she sleeps on the bed. Her plump chest rises and falls. It looks like she's breathing, but her body isn't moving at all. It's like the air around her has stopped. It's so tranquil, even I might stop moving. What a peaceful slumber. A kind of defenseless as if she had absolute trust in me, even though we've only just met. She's so stupid. She's so stupidly honest, I might start to worry. So are you. But aside from that, this is a turning point. This may very well be the point of no return for Tonoshiki. Ah. Uh, um, I don't know. So, I feel like, I just, uh, I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I did promise after all. No matter what it was, I promised I can't break it. Arcuid is sleeping. Her face is a pale white like that of a sick person. Arcuid said she was weak. He said she was at her limit just a while ago, so I don't think she considered what I could do after she went to sleep. The room is quiet. We're on the 11th floor, the top floor. Since she rented out the whole floor, there are no other guests here. The only sound is Archiweed's breathing. When I see her like this, she really looks nightmarishly beautiful. That white smooth skin and that silky light blonde hair, the soft lines of her body and those long eyelashes that look like swift brush strokes. A perfect body down to even the small details, the like of which I've never seen before. No, to be more precise, the kind I never would have seen in my entire life. Vampire or not, Arcuid is a girl. I have to take responsibility for the fact she's so weak now that she falls asleep instantly like she just did. You have to take responsibility for your own deeds. Part of my childhood education makes an appearance in my head. Sensei even told me. My eyes are strange, so they would in turn attract strange things. 
Indeed. Indeed. And I should be prepared to take responsibility. At the very least, I should keep my promise in protector for tonight. Oddities attract oddities, right? White. The kind you see when you wake up. That color calls some nostalgic memories to mind. Oh boy, this scene again. A hot summer day. Um, also, yeah, I was reminded that... So the whole intro scene from last in the last part that I read at the very beginning, just because I wanted to see what I could catch. I actually, it's, I can't compare that to Akiha and Shiki and Shiki playing because it was a hot summer day when they played. During that time, it was at night, so... I, so I really don't know. So thank you for clearing that up for me. Um, a hot summer day. Blue sky and large, large columns of summer clouds. The scenery slowly wavers in the heat. The voice of cicadas. The sound of cicadas. Chirp. Chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Cicada shells are lying in the clearing. As if the sun is right by my side, the clearing is roasting. A hot midsummer's day. As if the entire world became a frying pan. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Wah, wah. Akiya is crying. Akiya, who would always obediently stay close behind me, is brimming forth with tears. A child lies collapsed at her feet, soaked in blood, killed, the corpse of a child about my age, a cast off cicada shell. My two hands are red with the blood of that collapsed child. Shiki, the adults are coming. And that being in all caps now is like a different th meaning now. The fallen child is still dead. The adults are yelling. Did you kill him? Dude, we're straight up, this is straight up the perspective of actual, like, actual Tonoshiki. Saying, did you kill him? This is like a dream, like when a master has a dream about the servant, like the connection through the life force. We're seeing, like, Shiki's perspective. That dream. A dream I had forgotten even in my dreams. I feel like I remember. Chiki. Hey, wake up. The sun's already set. Someone is shaking me. A somewhat unfamiliar voice and a touch of a cold hand on my shoulder. Mm. Huh? Arkiwi is standing right in front of me. She's already woken up and it's pitch black outside. I glance at the clock and it says it's already eight. Eh? It's not eh, I told you to wake me up when the sun went down and you go and fall asleep? Crap. Sorry I was feeling out of it. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I'm sure it was while I was staring at Arcuid's sleeping face. Interesting. Jeez. You lose your qualification as a bodyguard like that. The enemy had attacked while we were both sleeping, we could have both died, you know? I said I'm sorry. Besides, you said it was safe during the daytime. I can't say that for sure. Familiars like the one we saw this morning could have come for us. Arcuid is angry. Well, she's got a right to be. Got no right to talk when I, the bodyguard, dozed off while she was sleeping. And besides, I'm a vampire, you know? How can you just sleep there without feeling any danger? I don't want you to be afraid for no reason, but it'd be nice if you were at least tense enough not to sleep. I take that back. Arcuid doesn't seem to care that I didn't do my job as a bodyguard. He just doesn't seem to like the fact that I fell asleep. I can move my body a little better and wake up, only to find you sleeping there happily. It looks so vulnerable, I was seriously starting to feel uneasy that I might not have the dignity befitting a vampire. But I don't think she has much dignity. You were just as vulnerable yourself. I killed you once before, remember? You can't guarantee I won't do it again, can you? Uh, Akuid gives a surprised look as if she only just realized it. And as you mention it, you're right. I wonder why I did that. I guess I just had complete confidence in you since we spoke in the alley. Well, saying that doesn't make me feel bad for her. Okay, since you trust me so much, I'll try my best. So should I just keep watch from now on? Yeah, until sunrise tomorrow. I can't leave the room, so be on guard if someone comes up to this floor. Be on guard, huh? Being on guard is going to do me no good if one of those black dogs from this morning comes for us. A woo sigh. I let out a sigh. As expected, this is too heavy a role for me. Let me ask you something. Was the black dog that attacked us this morning something your enemies sent out? 
I don't think so. It was probably for surveillance. This patrol route happened to pass through where you and I were talking, and it seems my presence was revealed as a result. Revealed? To your enemy? That's right. If I had been in perfect condition, it would actually save me some time. But right now, it's the opposite. If I were attacked now, I'd be the one annihilated. That's why I have to hide out like this for now until my power returns. Akiweed's enemy. In other words, the serial killer who's been causing the stir in this town. A vampire. Arcuid, I want to ask you something. Will you answer my question? I don't mind talking, but why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Yeah, I haven't asked you the most important thing yet, so what's your ultimate objective here? Me? I'm here to hunt down the vampire. Killing vampires is my duty. Yeah, I do remember you saying something like that before. But you're a vampire, right? What? You still don't believe me? Oh, don't worry, I believe you so much it hurts. I'm asking why would you, a vampire, claim to be doing something as odd as killing other vampires? Oh, you don't like the idea of beings from the same species killing each other? The act of killing doesn't exactly make my list of favorite things, but she is right. I'm not comfortable with the idea of vampires killing vampires. No, it's just that I can't really imagine something like that happening. Vampires drain the blood of humans, right? So they should be killing humans, not other vampires. Drinking blood and killing are different things. Well, even so, I know what you're trying to say. You think beings from the same species should help each other out, right? But vampires can be of the same species and still be different life forms. That's why they don't really have what you humans call camaraderie. And you're saying something makes you different from the vampire you're hunting? That's right. The one I'm after is a human vampire, just like the stereotypical vampire from you humans folklore. He kills humans by draining their blood, turning them into the dead, and uses them to increase his power and influence. That's the sort of vampire I hunt. The one lurking in this town is that sort of old-style vampire. That sort of vampire. It seems like there are different types. Don't tell me you want me to be your shield so you can get this guy. Yeah, that was my original intent. But after talking to you, I've changed my mind. You see, at first, I thought you were someone from the church. So I thought you might have information about the location of the enemy, but you turned out to be a perfectly ordinary person. You didn't even know about vampires, let alone the location of the enemy's coffin. Yeah, come to think of it, there's no way they'd send an exorcist to a far east secular country like this one. I guess I didn't put enough thought into this. Yeah, it's a bit unusual, but of course we know Sio has her own... personal reason. Akiwi thinks aloud. The conversation derails and I'm feeling a little left out. I don't follow you at all, Ar Arcuid. Ah, uh, hold on for a moment. Let's see. How should I explain this? With that, Arcuid's gaze begins drifting. He doesn't seem used to holding a conversation. Don't worry about it and just explain everything about the current situation. I don't understand any of this, but I might be able to see the general gist of things. Really? Thanks, Shiki. You don't have to thank me. Just keep talking. Arcuid nods obediently. Basically, the vampire currently in this town is an old-style vampire. He himself reigns as the lord and releases the dead he made into the city. By doing so, he increases his power bit by bit. He's a typical vampire in that he drains the blood of humans, and those humans become vampires themselves. He's not very powerful right now, as he doesn't have many dead serving him, but as the victims increase, so does his power. It would be best to destroy the main body before that happens, but I haven't found where he sleeps yet. So it's interesting, we know, like, she's talking about Roa. But, you know, as the player in Shiki, like, oh, she must be talking about the one we're hunting, which is Nero. He's sitting so well right now, I can't even feel his presence. Even so, it seems it's easy to take care of things once I find it. But I don't have any clues whatsoever, so I had no choice but to walk around town during the day to investigate. But then I suddenly got attacked by a passing killer, and now I'm temporarily weaker than the enemy vampire. Akiwi shoots me a cold look. I guess she wants to say something to the passing killer. I see. Who well, could be that she's talking about Nero? Because, I mean, the whole thing is that it's revealed that he ends up... He's not exactly making dead. Like, he's just straight up consuming humans. I see. I kind of understand the situation now. So, in other words, some evil monsters are based in this town, and you're here to eliminate them. Since you didn't know where they were, you went looking for them, and that's when I uh, killed you. So now you're weakened and hiding out while you recover, is that about right? Put it simply, I think so. The next is the main topic. You casually call yourself a vampire, but I still don't really understand the term. 
It's obvious you're not a human that much I can see, but I don't get the feeling that you're a vampire either. That's true. I'm a little different from the type of vampire you know about. Indeed, I hadn't considered that vampires even existed at all, let alone a vampire like you. What makes you different? Like you would think. Yes, I suppose it might be helpful to teach you a bit about us. Alright, then the first period's lesson will be Vampires 101. Okay, but what's with the Vampires 101? You're an amateur at this, so we've got to start with the basics, right? That's why I'm going to start teaching from the very beginning. Okay, whatever. Just keep it short. Well, I'll try my best. <laughs> she's so cute, dude. It really does seem like she's not used to talking. Well, we've got lots of time, so for now I guess I'll listen to Arcuid without complaint. Although we're typically called simply vampires, we're divided into two main categories. Those who were vampires from the start, and those who become vampires. The former are called true ancestors, and the latter are called the dead apostles. The ones you call vampires are the dead apostles. They drain the blood of humans and turn them into their slaves. They're weak against sunlight, and you can vanquish them with the baptism ritual. Our enemy is one of these dead apostles. It's gone from, it's gone from my enemy to our enemy. Well, I don't mind. She's not wrong, considering the situation I'm in now. Hmm. So you're saying these dead apostles aren't vampires from the start. What do you mean by that? So I realize this is all stuff I technically know, but I just... It helps for me to reinforce information, because I feel like I often... I'm taking in information and processing it while things are happening. But it's... To see it again is helpful to internalize, if that makes sense. I, I know a lot of you have commented very helpful things regarding that, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm sure I could skip this, but... I don't know. Again, I feel wrong just skipping scenes with Ark now, and just in general now. Like, I feel like we're getting into the route now, so I don't want to skip anything. Uh, did Apostles were once humans. They've attained immortality through magic or had their blood sucked by one of the true ancestors. Either way, the ones that become vampires become immortal, even though it's perfect immortal imperfect immortality. Those who were vampires from the beginning and humans who become vampires. What is this? I get the feeling that there's some kind of huge contradiction to all of this. It feels like some important fundamental is missing somewhere in this theory. Hey, Shiki. How much do you know about vampire folklore? Let's see, just the usual stuff. They suck the blood of virgins, they can bind people just by looking at them, they can turn into mist and wolves, just the usual stuff you hear about. Yeah, that's pretty much all true. They drain the blood of virgins because one's blood cells are more pure before one has exchanged bodily fluids with others. That makes virgins most suitable for repairing the vampire's own degenerating genes. So, okay, this is... That, in particular, is something I forgot. Like, I remember that she said they drain the blood of virgins, but... Part of me was, like, forgot before of, like, why, why prey on the young girls thing, right? So that's, as far as Roa, you know, preying on the young girls, then that makes sense. Because it's most suitable for repairing the degenerating genes. The dead apostles, the ones that become vampires, have imperfect immortality. Since they became immortal, they won't die from old age. However, they need to replenish their energy frequently or they'll disappear. All living creatures need nutrients to be able to move, right? It's the same thing. It's just that vampires don't die from age as long as they take in the nutrients. The dead apostles suck blood because they need to stay alive. Immortality is a strain on their original, originally human bodies. The genes that compose their bodies are different. When they become vampires, they begin to degenerate at an incredible rate. To make up for that, they must drain the blood of others in order to absorb genetic information and stabilize their own bodies. To a vampire, drinking blood is not like eating, but it's the minimum requirement for them to continue to exist. This sounds complex, and long. I can't follow the logic, but Arcuid nonetheless continues speaking. So, moving on. The ability to bind someone with just a look is a type of mystic eyes. Eyes and words are both common types of magic circuits, so there are many vampires who have mystic eyes. Now imagine, like, having to explain magecraft to fucking Shiki as well. We usually possess the mystic eyes of enchantment. We don't enchant people by looking at them, rather, we enchant those who look into our eyes. A powerful vampire using mystic eyes can impose his own will into the brain of another and completely dominate their thoughts, but the mystic eyes of a dead apostle doesn't have that much power. What you call turning into mist is really just making a spare body and controlling it via the will. Once the part serves its purpose, you cut the flow of magical energy to the offshoot and naturally it returns to dust. 
Wolves and other animal transformations are a byproduct of a vampire's repairing its damaged body from its familiars. A vampire living a long time, stabilizing their bodies with normal lives is not sufficient. Humans are not fundamentally powerful animals, so it's more effective to repair one's body by absorbing beasts, as they surpass the human species in this respect. Vampires who repair their own bodies with beasts can return those beasts to their previous forms and use them as familiars when they need to. Hmm, from what I've heard, there's even a thousand-year-old vampire whose body is made up entirely of familiars. They say he contains 666 beasts within his body, or something like that anyway. Yep, we're gonna see. I think Arcuid's getting a little too wrapped up in her own speech. To be honest, I'm not finding this world easy to understand. And yeah, that's about it. It's just an explanation of the very basics, but now do you know what a vampire is? Well, I suppose. The reality of Arcuid being a vampire begins to feel harder and harder to accept. Now it's my turn. Actually, there's something important I've forgotten to ask you, too. What? You're not going to learn anything from me. I'm not a vampire or anything, just an ordinary student. Hmm. And let me ask you this, Shiki. How exactly did you kill me? Huh? I'm asking about the method you used. I'm resistant against stuff like runes and Kabbalah, so those don't work on me. The only things I'm not resistant against is magic I've yet to experience, which is probably limited to the ancient Shinto in this country and the treasures in South America. No, not even those could kill me that much. Answer me, Shiki. What kind of occult artifact did you use to incapacitate me to that degree? Occult artifact? What's that? A catalyst which stores ideas in history. Geez, you've got sacred treasures in this country too, don't you? They're usually something like staves and swords, jewels and masks, conceptual weapons that can be used against nature itself. Come on, Shiki. <laughs> oh, man. God, I'm just reminded of the fucking anti-reincarnation gun from <laughs> the church. What an absurd fucking weapon, dude. Jeez, man. But yes, like swords, jewels, and mess. Um, are you sure you're not someone from one of those fields? What field? I told you, I'm just a student. I don't know anything. That's a lie. There's no way a human who's not even a magist can hurt me. Are you hiding something from me, Shiki? Arcuid gives me an angry cat-like stare. Cat-like. But even if she looks at me like that, I'm not hiding any- Oh, wait. Actually, there is one thing. I'm not sure whether it's relevant, but... <laughs> oh, boy. Arcuid is still staring at me. It doesn't seem like I'll be able to keep quiet about it. Alright, I'll tell you, but how should I put this? I can see these lines that can be used to cut things. Eh? Oh. She's stunned. She should be. Normally, I don't think anyone would believe a story like this. What do you mean? Arcuid asks in a serious tone. She's not exactly normal. I should have known she would defy my expectations in a good way. I mean, I see these lines where things can be cut. Living things, the ground, anything touchable. It's like a black line and I can cut these things clean when I let anything sharp through it. Does that mean anything to you? It's convenient to be able to cut steel with a knife and all, but it's not like I can cut it anywhere I like. I can only cut things where I can see the lines, and when I cut you, well, you can cut a girl's skin with just a knife, right? The way it's phrased is so, like, creepy and just... oh god. Arcuid's eyes are serious as she glances at me, those wild eyes that I've only seen once before. A gaze that could stop my breathing. I see. I thought the mystic eyes of death perception only existed in fairy tales. But I guess there is someone who can use them, a mutated monster like you. What? I don't think a vampire can call me a monster. A monster is a monster. There isn't anyone, even amongst us, with mystic eyes that can see the death of things. See the death of things? Arcuid nods in affirmation with an amicable gaze. A circuit must have opened in your eyes, Shiki. Were you born with the eyes like that? No. It became like this a long time ago, but I wasn't born with them. Hmm. And you must have had at least one near-death experience at some point, right? What? It's true. Eight years ago, I got in an accident where I almost died. Just as I suspected. You had the latent ability, but that must have been the trigger. The mystic eyes of death perception, huh? Yes, with those you could definitely kill, even me. With a small sigh, Arcuid's eyes returned to normal. Arcuid, do you know something about these lines? Not to the extent you would, but I do have some information. What you see is the end of all things, the point where things die easily. 
To put it simply, the time of death for everything in existence, that is, death itself. I remember now, that time, when Sensei gave me these glasses, she had told me something similar to what Arcuit said. But there's a subtle difference to what Sensei said and what Arcuit said. What I'm seeing are only lines, not something as disturbing as death. What are you saying? What I see are just the lines where things can be cut. I'm telling you, those lines are the death of the object. Listen, Shiki. Everything in existence has an end. There are differences to when, but it's an end nonetheless. Death does not arrive. It is already contained within the object at its creation, and it's bound to happen someday. This is what is called the principle of causality. You've heard of that before, right? As long as something has an origin, it must have an end. When it will end is determined from its beginning. That's its so-called time of death. So, as it already exists from the beginning, it's not impossible for one to see it with their eyes, given that they can comprehend the concept of a time of death and they have the appropriate circuit in their brain and eyes. Right, you have to comprehend it too. That's the truth behind those lines you see. This is nothing more than the general concept, but if I were to theorize, I would say that they are the weakest parts of the joints between the molecules in something, or perhaps a pre-designated switch within the genetic makeup that activates the death of that object. Ah, but that doesn't really make sense. Hmm. I can't see them, so I can't say for sh Oh. I can't see them, so I can't say for sure, but the lines aren't all you can see, are they? I would think there would be points more than lines. Ah, that's right. When I first saw Arcuid, when I wasn't myself, when I took off my glasses, I could see the usual scribbles and black points where the scribbles seemed to flow from. There were. It only happened at one time, but definitely. I saw black points. There were several on your body, and the black lines flowed between them, joining them up. If I had to make an analogy, I would say they were like blood vessels. I see. The lines where things die easily, and death itself, huh? I'm surprised you've stayed alive up until now like this. You must have a very tranquil heart, Shiki. Arguid says this philosophically. In my own way, I understand what she is saying, but I don't want to believe any of it. What? There's no way that sort of thing exists, let alone me being able to see it. But you are seeing it. Usually when you cut a living being's neck, they die. This means it stops because you've cut it. Conversely, you can say that if you can't cut something's neck, it won't die. Ah, this is about me, so just consider it an exception. But in your case, you can ignore the cause. Even against that which is immune to all external effects, you kill first. What is killed then becomes dead. It's not that it stopped because you cut it, but in your case, you stop the object and you stop the object and as a result it is cut. See? What else can I call you but a monster? You may just call them lines along which something can be cut, but those eyes are more special than those possessed by any other user of supernatural power in history. You, Shiki, have the eyes that can kill anything, just like death itself. So cool, but what a curse. I'm at a loss for words. That really is what I see, just like Arcuid is saying, those black lines really are the time of death for all things. Probably the true, like, definition of gift and a curse. And everything around me is filled with death. So what? If it's all as you say, I should be able to kill even you? Really? Then let's try it. Arcuid opens the curtains. The lights are off. The only illumination is the faint moonlight coming in through the window. Come on, it's alright. Try it, seriously. Ah, uh, wait, could it be you can't see them with those glasses on? Are you sure about this? I take my glasses off. Only to see the lines, of course. At the same time, the room begins to writhe with the black lines. Outside the window, the moon is white. They're difficult to see in the daytime due to the strong sunlight, but under the faint moonlight, I can see even the glow coming from the lines. Amidst them, the lines on Arcuid's body are very thin. If I don't concentrate, I lose sight of them altogether. Ah, if I hadn't been killed by you, I don't think you'd be able to see any at all, but right now you can probably see them. You see, although I have no times of death during the night, some do appear during the day. You could kill me because it was during daytime, but you can see my time of death during nighttime now, since I've used up a lot of energy to regenerate myself. In other words, I've lost my immortality. So, can you cut the lines on my body, Shiki? Let's see. I think I probably could since the lines are there, but I don't think I could do it so briskly and without hesitation like that time before. I think it'd be hard. The lines keep fading in and out, so I probably couldn't do it unless you're sleeping. You can't, right? 
That's your biggest weak point. No matter how many deaths you can see, you need to trace the line with your own hands. No matter how weak I am right now, my athletic ability isn't so low that I'd be caught by you. I see. Come to think of it, I can't catch agile animals. That means I can't touch their bodies. In other words, even if I can see its lines, I can't kill anything that moves. You have the Sharing Gun, but you can't catch Rock Lee. Ow! I feel a stab of pain run through my head. Looking at the lines gives me a headache just like it did when I was a child. Put on my glasses and the world returns to normal. Akiwid is staring intently at me. What? Is there something else? No, that's not it. You can't see the lines if you put those- oh. No, that's not it. You can't see the lines if you put those glasses on? Yeah. I got them from someone a long time ago when my eyes first became like this. I'm only using the lenses now, but thanks to them I can lead a normal life. Yes, I see. No matter how strong a mind you may have, your only choices when faced with death all the time would be to put out your eyes or go mad. Saying that, Arcuid comes closer. Hey, can I take a look at them? No, these are important to me. I'm not handing them over to you. Come on, I'm not going to break them. I'm just going to look at them. Arcuid creeps closer. I get the feeling she wouldn't be adverse to getting them by force. I... Okay, um... I'm going to leave this here. You'll notice some extra saves there. It's actually, um... The thing I had to go do before is because... There was a lot of choices in a row where it was like, Hey, do you want to skip here? Hey, do you want to skip here? Hey, do you want to skip here? I even got all the way up to this point. And I was like, I can't... I can't skip this much, dude. So I, I loaded back and that's... When I cut back to there. But, um... Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop here. For now. Next time, we will go against Nero and we will see whatever is next. Um, of course, with the CL route, there is a lot of arc and, of course, all, a lot of these scenes. So, it's probably going to be redundant uh, for a part or two, which I'm, I'm fine with. Like, I, I think just being with Ark, interacting with her, even if the information itself is redundant, is kind of important to my investment in the route, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like wherever it ends up, um, the journey is going to be important for me to appreciate, like, the destination more. So, um... I keep saying that over and over, but you, I just, you know, I want to make that clear for anyone being like, oh my god, it's going to take him so long. Uh, but yes, I think that's where I'm going to stop for now, so thank you guys for watching my playthrough. I know it's, I'm kind of running into the thing now with doing, um, doing it in this order that it's kind of like this, but uh, yeah, that being said, I appreciate you um, sticking with me and watching it, man, and... I'll see you next time. Peace.